Good morning. I just wanted to share something a little more this morning. See, I'm not driving here. But yeah, just sharing. Um, I was thinking earlier about how we hear a lot about, you know, these rich elites and things like this. And, you know, I just want to let you know that there's nothing new under the sun, you know, that that's been going on for years. <laughs> I mean, the rich has been impressing the poor for years. I mean, you see it all throughout the word. I mean, even in James, we got in the New Testament where he was he was telling them, he said, look, he said, is, is it not the rich who oppress you? <laughs> they draw you before the judgment seats. But look what he said. So it's like, but us, you know, God's chosen the poor of this word, the world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom of God. You know, so I just want to encourage you that uh, that there's nothing new. That that's just, you know what I mean. That's what's been going on. So don't let let anyone, you know, make you think that there's some big new fear, some new boogeyman out there. That uh, you know, there's always been the rich oppressing the poor. But uh, we know that um, that Jesus came. He's acquainted with all of our griefs. You know what I mean. He 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 bore our sins you know what i mean on the cross and uh you know i was even thinking about that filament earlier you know um the the letter that paul wrote to Philemon. well he was this onesimus or something that was his name he was a runaway slave and uh even us as as that are brothers in the lord or, or whatever sisters in the lord you know Paul, he told him, he said, look, receive him back, but not just as a servant, but as a beloved brother. You know, even if someone, if you're a Christian and someone serves you in some way or you're above someone, you know what I mean? Receive them as a beloved brother, you know, and even it talks about in Proverbs, it says the poor that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain that leaves no food or something like that. It's like a sweeping rain, it'll leave nothing, you know, so some people can be poor and then all of a sudden, get wealth and then all of a sudden they turn to an oppressor someone that starts oppressing the poor or something like that so we all have to guard our hearts from you know what i mean there's like levels of people in society you got the lower class the middle class the higher class so it's like you know the the rich elites may oppress everybody and but then you might have the middle class that oppresses some more of the lower class or whatever it's everybody has that thing in them where they want to be an authority you know what I mean? Like over someone. So we all have to guard our hearts from pride and being uplifted and oppressing one another. And not just, hey, I want someone to serve me. How about let them be your beloved brother? How about love one another? Like I was saying earlier, you know, that they'll know we're, we're Christians by our love for one another. They'll know that we're Christ because of our love for one another. So, you know, I just want to tell you, like, he, he warned them. He warned them over here in, uh, in James 5, even. That was James 2. I'll just read what he said in James 2. He said, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and you say unto the poor, Stand there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then uh, become partial in yourselves? Uh, and are become judges of evil thoughts. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not the rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not blasphemy? that worthy name by which you are called if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself thou do well but if thou have respect of persons you commit sin or convinced of the law as transgressors so yeah don't have respect of you know what i mean god's chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom of god you know he told that story about uh lazarus and the lazarus and um um uh, the rich man and here he was, uh, the rich man, whenever he went to Hades, the place of torment, he said, hey, look, you had your good on earth. Now you're in this place of torment and he has his good. So you know what I mean? So don't have this world's goods and shut up your bowels of compassion against someone in need. And don't let the, you know, a Bible says a rich man's wealth is like a high wall in his own imagination. See, that's just in his imagination. He said in Psalm 49 that these people's inner thought is that they'll be forever. We see people today 
sitting there trying to like they're going to live forever or something you know what i mean there there's literally a lab in colorado where they're trying to find everlasting life they they found this thing in the sea that can continually replicate itself and they think they're going to have everlasting life and then they're saying they're, they're going to be able to do it through a computer i mean there's literally people that think that they're they're really trying to play out on that you know and uh, so he tells you over in Psalm 49, he says, look, he said, you should cease trying that you'll go on and live forever. He said, both the high and low, the rich and poor together. He said, here, all the both low, high, rich and poor together. Uh, my mouth will speak wisdom. The meditation of my heart shall be understanding. I will incline my ear to parable. I will open my dark saying upon the heart. Wherefore should I fear in the, day, the days of evil when the iniquity of my hills shall come past me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the abundance of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother or give God a ransom for them. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever. That he should li still live forever and not see corruption. See people that got it in their heart, they should live forever and not see corruption. For he sees that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. You know, that's what Solomon said over in Ecclesiastes. You know, who knows whenever I go, if it's going to be a wise man that I leave uh, my wealth to or a fool. Someone can come and spend up what you stored your whole life thinking you were wealth. So you're going to leave it to others. What does he say here in Psalm 49, 11? Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their names. Now look what he went over to say in James 5. Go now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped up treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which, it, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the Lord of Sabbath. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Then what did he say? Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. So just be patient. Wait on the Lord. Renew your strength in Him. Find your hope in Him. In Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God. He gives to all men liberally. Um, you know, He opens up His hands, satisfies the desire of every living being. Paul instructed us over there. He said, look, he said, uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. He said, I've learned to have much. I've learned to have little. But godliness with contentment is great gain. See, we've carried nothing into this world. We're going to carry nothing out. I know a rich man's wealth is a high wall in his own imagination, but that's just in his imagination. You know what I mean? He, he carried nothing. He's going to come into this world like how he, you know, he's going to leave out of this world like how he came in with nothing. None of these possessions. You know what I mean? That's why we should really see the reality of that it's truly beneficial to store up treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not destroy. You know what I mean? Here on this earth, everything, you can go spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on a vehicle and next year it's already got scratches and dings and dents. Years later, I mean, it ain't going to be many years later or it's got rust. You're having to do all kind of maintenance to it to maintain it. You know what I mean? It's, it's corrupted. You're in a corrupted, fallen world here. So seek for yourself treasures in heaven where, where moth and rust does not destroy. You know, we've been bought with a price, so we should glorify God with our body. Don't worry. Don't fear them. Don't fear man who can take your life, but fear God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So I just wanted to encourage you a little bit on that. There's nothing new under the sun. These rich people, they've been around doing this stuff for years. Oppressing the poor. That's the way a rich man a lot of times gets wealth by continually oppressing and oppressing the poor. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how they keep it. They want more for themselves. That's why the eye's not satisfied with sin. They're not, it's not, you can't satisfy the flesh. You know, uh, so as goods increase, those that increase it consume them. But believe on Jesus today. 
our, in him are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Believe in Christ and in Christ alone. Our hope is in Christ and Christ alone. Love you all.